Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Jimmy Lee, known as Raw Fishing, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the new Cast King Kestrel Elite BFS Reel for ultralight fishing. That's right. And you guys are probably wondering, how can a bait casting reel be used for ultralight fishing? Well, let me break down this video for you guys. In this video, what I'll do is first, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this reel and how you could actually achieve casting ultralight lures on a bait casting reel. And then I'm gonna show you guys my ultralight bait casting setup for throwing these light lures. And then lastly, we'll go out and do a cast to catch. You guys ready for this? Let's go. Have you ever tried casting a light lure on a typical bait casting setup? What's gonna happen? I'll tell you exactly what's gonna happen. The lure is gonna fly out just a little bit, it's gonna curve, and it can smack right in front of you. There are three key components that allow a bait casting reel to cast light lures. The spool, the bearings, and the braking system. For this video's sake, we are only focusing on talking about this cool, small, little spool on the Castro Elite BMS reel. Besides, you guys want me to address the elephant in the room, right? That spool, why is it so shallow? Like every single time when I post a BFS reel on any of my social media platforms, there's gonna be people asking me questions like, how much line could I put on that spool? Where am I gonna put the line on? How far are you gonna cast? 10 feet? Like those are totally silly questions because this is a finesse reel. You're not gonna put on 50 pound test line. You put in very, very thin line. So this spool here actually could hold plenty of line. In fact, enthusiasts like myself, who want to throw the super light stuff wouldn't even max the spool out with line. We want to keep the spool light as possible. But anyway, let's break down this spool and talk a little bit more about it. So why such a shallow spool? There's actually a lot of reason for the shallow spool. First and foremost, we are casting super light lures, right? With thin line. When you have thin line, you don't need that much capacity. We're not gonna cast a three gram lure down a football field. Heck, you won't even cast half a football field. So do you need 300 feet of line? No, you don't. You just need enough line to cast that lure out. So by restricting the amount of line that you need on a spool, you keep the spool weight very, very light so you can cast light lures. In addition, the shallow spool or large circumference, it will help dispense enough line per rotation for that light lure to fly out there. Now, there's a lot of big casters out there that have super light spools, but their spool is still deep and some anglers would spool up only X amount of line to keep that spool light so they can cast light lures. However, they still suffer from casting distance because that circumference is actually very, very small. So they're still being restricted because it's not dispensing enough line per rotation. Thus having a BFS reel with a shallow spool actually helps in casting light lures further. The last thing I want to talk about is the weight of the spool. The spool here with the bearing inside weighs 5.4 grams. However, if you remove the bearing, this is an amazing super light spool at 4.5 grams, making this the lightest spool right out of the box. So this guy right here is made for throwing super light lures. So the next part of this video is I'm gonna show you guys how I'll set up this reel for ultralight fishing. I'm gonna show you guys the rod and line choices and it's really important to know that BFS reel, you can't just slap it on any casting rod and say, hey, I'm BFS fishing. That's not how it works. Although you can do it, that's not what BFS reels are made for. BFS reel works best on ultralight, light, and sub-medium light. Now, not all BFS reels are created equally, but what I want to share with you guys is that this Cast King Castro Elite BFS reel shines on ultralight, light, and medium light. It's an all-rounder, but with this super small shallow spool, super light spool, it definitely, definitely shines on ultralight, which is why I'm showing you guys how to set up this reel here for ultralight setup and have a lot of fun. The rod I'll be using for my ultralight setup is the Casting Zephyr BFS rod. This is a two-piece rod. The specific model I'll be using is the five foot six inches. It has a fast tip and the lure rating is one to eight grams. For line choices, I like to use braided line as the main line because braided line is thin and it's very, very light. Having light line will allow you to keep the total weight of the spool light so you can throw those super light lures. Therefore, I'll be putting the new Destron braided line on and I'll be using six pound test line which is their thinnest version and I'll be tying leader material and I love using the casking floral coat line. This is a cold polymer line and I like to use the four pound version. Now that we know what line I like to use for ultralight fishing, let me show you how I'll put line onto the spool. First thing first, what you want to do is put your reel onto the rod. Next thing is you want to start feeding your braided line through the line guides. Once you finish putting the line through the line guides of your rod, what you want to do is open the side plate of your reel and then take your spool out and put it on the side. Now, 
thread through the line guide of your reel and then out to side of your reel. From here, make sure you guys pull ample line out because what we want to do next is you want to tie a uni knot. I like to use a uni knot because it has a loop that you can resize. Feel free to use any other type of knot that allows you to resize the loop. Next thing is you want to put that loop over your spool and then you want to twist and then you want to go around the spool again and then do it three times total. Now once you finish wrapping around the spool three times, you want to tighten the entire spool and what you'll notice is now the wraps around the spool will tighten and it will not slip at all. Isn't that crazy? Once you cinch down the line, trim the, the tag end and then you want to put your spool right back into your reel, then put your side plate back on and then you want to tighten your drag to a point where you can start reeling very easily and start pulling out line. Now you have put together your reel, it's time to pull out line. I mentioned earlier that finesse anglers like to measure their line and put specific amount of line onto their spool because they want to keep the spool light as possible. For my ultralight fishing, I typically do about 125 feet of line. In order to measure line, you guys could use a line counter or you guys could do simple math. We know that one full crank of the reel's handle will give you 29.1 inches, right? So let's talk about how much line you want on the spool. Well, when I throw ultralight lures below three grams, I like to have about approximately 125 feet to 150 feet. Let's just use 125 for math sakes, right? If you take 125 feet and multiply it by 12, because you have 12 inches per foot, right? Then you take 1500 and divide it by 29.1, what do you get? All right, so let's say 55 cranks. So now all you have to do is reel up 55 times and you have approximately 125 feet of line. Boom, math done, let's go. So now we have the braided line spooled onto your reel. It's time to put on some leader materials. I like to use the floral coat once again, and I'll be using four pounds. And the typical knots, I like to connect the two main leader braided lines to, you know, leader material is the Albright knot. However, you guys can use whatever you guys feel most comfortable. All right, folks, I have this new Z-Man swim bait here. This is the Shad Fries, and I have it on a 1 16th ounce jig head, and as you see, once you weigh this, this thing right here is 2.8 grams, which is perfect for ultralight fishing. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be a very, very fun lure to throw during the fall for any sort of species, trout, bass, crappies, you name it. But let's set this reel up first. Now, I know a lot of people are used to the very old school style of setting up your reel, your bait casting reel, and that is actually made for the centrifugal braking system. You know, the one where it says tighten your tension up all the way and then let your lure fall out out, fall down, and uh, it gotta fall as slow as possible and hit the ground and not roll, right? Eh -eh, that's totally wrong. How we set up bait finesse reel is we use zero tension. So what you wanna do is loosen up your tension knob until you have this side to side play, all right? But we don't wanna cast with this nasty side to side play. You hear this clacking? That's bad, because what happened is when you cast out there and if your spool ever moves, you wanna to touch the side while it's spinning, well, that could cause a slowdown. Okay, any sort of vibration like that, it causes a slowdown and that's bad. What you want to do is, once you get this side to side play, is start tight tightening your tension knob, right, until it doesn't have that or just barely. For those who are beginner, I recommend not to have any side to side play. Barely. And there we go, this is good. And then for beginners, what you want to do is set maybe like uh, three or four brakes and get out there and start casting. You want to cast light first and then lower the brakes until you feel comfortable. Enough talking about theories. Let's get out there and let me show you. All right, guys, we are now at the casting pond. First and foremost, let's take a look at the drag for a second. It's not bad. I had a pretty tight earlier because uh, we were spooling up line and you want some uh, tight drags to make sure that the lines are on there pretty nice and even and tight. And uh, yeah, keep it loose for fishing ultralight. And this should be okay, not too bad. Anyways, let's take a look at the brakes again. Uh, for people who are new to BFS fishing, I do recommend having some high brakes, right? So you could put it probably, you know, midpoint, five or so. And when you do BFS fishing, you know, we are throwing light stuff. You don't want to swing it very hard. You don't want to do any sort of a overhand cast very hard. Just side, you know, 
back and forth. All right, so let's do this. Look at that, pretty easy. That went out not bad, but we could likely cast out a lot further. So let's just lower the brakes. Let's try like three. There we go. Thumb it right before it hits the water. That's pretty good. I just missed it just a tad bit, but uh, yeah, not bad at all. So let's go around the pond, around three brakes, and let's see if we catch some fish. As you see, there's a lot of bait fish moving, and they are a lot of bluegills and bass about the same size as this lure here. So during the fall, I love throwing stuff like this, and I think it's gonna be perfect on BFS. So if you guys are new to BFS, you guys gotta try this. So small little guys, oh, look at that. See, there's stuff that's right on the side. You can walk around the pond and just cast this. Look at that. There's, oh, got one right there. Look at that, they're feeding. They're feeding. And I think I need to up the drag just a little bit. There we go. Look at that. Oh yeah. There we go. Look at that. Bam. He took this guy. This is the most insane bite ever. It went through its gills and it came back down. That's crazy. All right, oh, you go. This guy was hungry, feeding on those small little fish. Whoop, whoop. You guys are wondering how far I am casting out, right? Remember earlier in this video, this thing right here do about 29.1 inch per crank. Let's cast this guy out there. Boom. All right, that's where I landed. Let's crank this thing up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty, thirty-four and a half. Okay, thirty-four and a half. So yeah, that's pretty far. You guys take a look at the overlay as I've done the math. That's how far I approximately have casted this small little 2.8 grams lure. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about setting up your Cascade Kestrel Elite BFS reel for ultralight fishing, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you are interested in the Cascade Zephyr BFS ultralight rods, you guys can get that at Bait Finesse Empires. This is currently the only store authorized in the US to sell this rod. If you want to keep up to date with Cascade products, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to watch me fish casking products and BFS products, feel free to check out my YouTube channel, link in the description below. The fish don't wait. Have you gotten your casking Castro Elite BFS reel yet? Go get it. Oh, got him. Mosquitoes are everywhere biting me, and fish are biting me, finally. Oh man. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. What do you guys think? You guys gonna enjoy BFS fishing? I sure do. Peace out.